Hey everyone, it's Tealer with Stowbetter, and today I want to talk to you about the Custom Power Matrix. This console comes from the Elios, which was the winter reward ship this year. And while it's a bit dense to unpack, it essentially functions as a purely passive stat stick rather than something you need to toggle or activate. But how good is it? Functionally, this console has three different effects that can be turned on and they last forever until turned off. You're going to want to turn them all on. Shields to bridge mode, drains shield power, and you gain 20% weapon firing cycle haste. Engines to bridge mode, drains engine power, and you gain 15% weapon critical severity. Aux to bridge mode, drains aux power, and you gain 5% weapon critical chance. If any or all of these are active, you gain 20% recharge haste for your bridge officer abilities. These bonuses are pretty good, but that's a lot of power to lose as sort of an inverse plasmonic leech. Thankfully, this is where the console's passives come into play. You gain a power bonus depending on which slot it's put into. If it's in a universal console slot, you gain 120% power transfer rate. If it's in an engineering slot, you gain plus 20 aux power and plus 5 max aux power. If it's in a science slot, you gain 20 shield power and plus 5 max shield power. If it's in a tactical slot, you gain 20 engine power and plus 5 max engine power. Let's start up front by saying this is not a winner for universal console slot. Neither is shield power a meaningful bonus, and before someone says, but Tilly shield, let me remind the class that the shield's increased damage to shield passive scales from the shield power setting, not the current shield power level. That leaves putting this in an engineering or tactical slot, at which point you choose which stat you want to dump, engine or aux. If your ship is more sluggish and or scales off engine power via items like Dragon's Blood Flame Reactor on disruptor builds, reroute reserves to weapons, or uses the Soliton Wave Impeller or Inertial Polar and Shunt, then AUX is the dump stats that you want to use, and you put this in tactical to get engine power. On the flip side, if your ship relies more on hangars, AUX scaling exotic powers, is flown by a science captain, or AUX scaling consoles like the Temporal Disentanglement Suite Fleet Power Network Array, then engine power is the dump stat, and this sits in an engineering console slot. If you have a conflict between the two sets of criteria, you're going to have to decide which is more important to you. It's also worth noting that all of these lovely bonuses from the three active effects are specific to weapon builds. The passive haste does apply to both torpedoes, experimental weapons, mines. They like this just as much as an energy build would, but exotic builds or anything built supportive can skip it. Now, I can already guess there's some trepidation about putting a console in an engineering slot. But my DPS! What about ISO Max? One of the best use cases of the Trinity tool is to compare stats between A and B choices like this. So while it's not as metazorged as some of the builds out there, let's look at a 1.3 million CSV DPS build in Trinity to see the comparison. The sheet is linked in the description. So yes, this is better than an isomag, and since all the effects are basically set and forget, it doesn't matter whether you're using unconventional systems or the Vovin console or not. It's a passive console with far more stats to a weapon build than 39.4% type specific Cat 1 damage, especially with the rise of the Pav and Omni, which will devalue that increase. Also, since all three modes are toggles, don't put them in a spam bar. Turn them on at the start of the mission and leave them alone. What about cool downs? Now what about that passive 20% all recharge haste on the console? Does that allow you to skip Photonic Officer on a Boimler based setup and free up a slot for something like another unconventional systems trigger? The answer is, it depends on your appetite for risk. I've put a selection of Bridge Officer powers into our cooldown reduction calculator. Blue is the duration, gray is the difference between the duration and the minimum or duplicate cooldown, and orange is excess cooldown. This is the part of the cooldown we can affect. Some powers can increase in duration under special circumstances, but in general that and the duplicate cooldown are locked. Photonic Officer is a small percent reduction every second. It pulls 2-4% of the base cooldown off of the power for 20 seconds, with a 10 second downtime afterwards. If you get all 20 seconds of its cooldown reduction, it will take 40-80% to off the total cooldown of the power in question. Most often, this makes the most sense at rank 1. If we assume perfect application of Photonic Officer and taking two points in tactical readiness from the skill tree, you can see we knock out a huge chunk of our cooldowns. Most of the orange excess cooldown is gone. However, since Photonic Officer isn't always up, 
we can just as easily get it to miss the first 10 seconds of our power's recharge cycle. We see this most dramatically on powers like Canon Scatter Volley, where we are close to 20 seconds total instead of 16 and a half if we get Photonic Officer off perfectly. However, you'll notice there are many powers that are at their minimum cooldown, like Emergency Power and Gravity Well. Let's look at taking Photonic Officer out and adding in Custom Power Matrix. With a little tactical readiness thrown in, you can see a wide majority of powers still have excess cooldown. Here's where Boimler comes in. Every time you use a Bridge Officer power, you have a 17.5% chance of completely removing all remaining excess cooldowns. In theory, you could even run with just Boimler. However, when it fails to trigger at a good time, you are stuck with full cooldowns on all of your powers. What if we take Boimler out? How close can we get with Photonic Officer 1, Custom Power Matrix, some Readiness, and even Chrono Capacitor Array? Our best Photonic Officer cycle is very good, with only some of our excessive cooldown powers not hitting minimum. If you get an off cycle of Photonic Officer, those key 30 second tactical powers don't quite hit the mark. We're talking only a couple seconds here, so that's up to you. From a clean solution perspective, Boimler plus Photonic Officer 1 is tough to beat. Photonic Officer 1 does the bulk of the heavy lifting, and Boimler cleans up what is left. Custom Power Matrix is a great benefit, but not strong enough to displace Photonic Officer 1 or Boimler on its own. If you want to make a change, ask yourself this. What appetite for risk do you have for when Boimler fails? Do you have other cooldown support? For example, Calm Before the Storm or the new Krenum Chronophage console? Is it more important to free up non-tax skill nodes or a Lieutenant Science Bridge Officer slot? Personally, I won't be making any cooldown scheme changes with this console. Photonic Officer is very strong, and generally a Lieutenant Science power on a weapon build won't be super impactful as a different power. If you don't have Boimler, Custom Power Matrix is just another tool in your toolbox for getting better power uptime. Now of course, this is a fairly basic analysis, and if you want to fine tune your cooldown scheme, we added the Custom Power Matrix to the cooldown reduction tool. We're also aware that it's popular in organized runs to partially outsource your cooldown scheme, so that's potentially a consideration if that's what you're building around. For general play, here's what we came up with. For exotic builds, if you're on a low budget, you can use Photonic Officer 2. If you can afford it, pick up Improve Photonic Officer and go with Photonic Officer 1. For projectile builds, you can run the Custom Power Matrix and Photonic Officer 2, or occasionally you could switch to Ox to Bat times 2, but you've got to watch out for the reduction in your Ox power when you do that. If you have the budget for it, go Custom Power Matrix plus the Boimler effect plus Photonic Officer to reduce your risk. If you're not using Fire at Will and you're on an energy weapon build, the Custom Power Matrix plus Photonic Officer 2 or Ox to Bat works really well here. If you can afford it, go ahead and pick up the Boimler effect. If you're on a Fire at Will build, you can use the Custom Power Matrix or Photonic Officer, and you can always pick up Boimler to reduce your risk a little bit further. To summarize, the Custom Power Matrix should go on all weapon-focused DPS builds in an engineering or tactical console slot, depending on whether AUX or engine power is more desirable for your build. Custom Power Matrix should engage all three modes on the start of the mission and not be on the spam bar. Don't bother touching them again. Custom Power Matrix's recharge haste is not sufficient to allow Boimler to be dropped off most builds, especially for powers with high base cooldown and low minimum cooldown, like Concentrate Firepower. Custom Power Matrix's recharge haste could allow for dropping Photonic Officer or half to bat on weapon builds and solely running with Boimler Effect plus the Custom Power Matrix, but you're going to increase your risk and reliance on Boimler rolling well for you. I don't see that ending well. Custom Power Matrix can be used to displace the Boimler effect without penalty on DPS-oriented Fire at Will builds due to their longer tactical cycle chains. Photonic Officer or Ox to Bat can be dropped instead of Boimler if there's other cooldown support like Calm Before the Storm, Chrono Capacitor Array, and some readiness. Also of note, those of you that have universal designs and really love it, this actually triggers every time you click the power. So at the beginning of the map, you can turn on all three, and you'll see you have three stacks. You can immediately turn them off again, and then wait 10 seconds and turn them back on again, and you'll have maxed out your stacks of universal designs. Now, this is not recommended when you're actually flying around, but if you're in the briefing, you can use it to pre-buff very easily. You get all five stacks from one console within the space of about 10 to 12 seconds. 
Hopefully that was a good summary for you to understand some of the interesting things that we found with the custom power matrix. We hope to see this being slotted on a lot of energy builds coming up, and since it was a winter event reward, hopefully it's pretty accessible. Unfortunately, if you don't have it now, you're not going to be able to get it for quite some time. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs>